l'opposition. But everything he does makes the problem worse. Right. It started with a half trillion dollars of inflationary deficits. More money chasing fewer goods equals higher prices. Then he brought in more inflationary taxes with the help of his costly coalition partners. They want to triple, triple, triple that tax. And now his deficits are driving up interest rates faster than at any time in 30 years. There's really one thing for him to do. Stop! Stop the inflationary taxes. Stop the inflationary deficits. Stop driving up the cost of living. Will he do the honorable thing, the compassionate thing, and stop taxing Canadians? The right honorable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the investments we made during the pandemic to support seniors, to support young people, uh, to support workers, to support small businesses, not only helped people significantly through the difficult years of the pandemic, but also ensured that our economy uh, came roaring back faster than many other economies uh, in the, in, around the world. That's why we've continued to be there to support Canadians, not just because it's the nice thing to do, but also because it's the way to ensure sure that our economy uh, grows in the best possible ways for all Canadians, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Leader of the Opposition. He claimed he had to add that half trillion dollars of debt because of COVID, but according to his own parliamentary budget officer, 40% of the new debt he added in the last two years alone had nothing whatsoever right. to do with COVID. This Prime Minister has added more debt than all previous Prime Ministers combined, saying that low interest rates would make it a cost, uh, costless proposition. Well, now we learn from Desjardins Banking that Canadians will spend more on debt interest on the federal debt next year, $50 billion, than we typically spend on health care transfers to the provinces. Wow. Why is he giving the money to bankers and bondholders instead of doctors and nurses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, our investments to support Canadians through the pandemic, our investments to support them right now with the GST credit that's going to help uh, families with hundreds of dollars at a moment they need them, uh, support uh, low-income uh, families pay for rent, support uh, low-income families uh, with so help for dental. These are the things that are going to make a difference right now in the way we move forward. While the Conservatives talk about cuts to EI, cuts to pensions, and taking money away away from Canadians by ending the climate action incentives that has most Canadians far better off uh, with the investments we're making to fight climate change. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, it kind of reminds me, you know, he's a carbon tax will, paying higher taxes will make people better off. Well, we found out from the parliamentary budget officer that wasn't true. And then he said that he would take on all the debt so that Canadians wouldn't have to. Remember that? <laughs> Well, not only are they stuck with a higher national debt with more interest payments, but now their personal debts are going up. According to Equifax, the average Canadian household has more credit card debt than at any time in Canadian history, and the Prime Minister's wow. inflationary policies are driving up interest rates on those costs. So if he really took on all that debt so that Canadians won't ha wouldn't have to, who's going to pay those Canadians' credit card bills? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Opposition were truly concerned about the cost of living for Canadians, he would be supporting our measure to support families uh, with the cost of dental care for their kids. They'd help uh, with uh, our support on low-income renters as well. But, Mr. Speaker, I'm also astonished to hear that the Leader of the Opposition has been silent uh, on the matter of the use of the notwithstanding clause preemptively to suspend people's fundamental rights and freedoms. I call on the Leader of the Opposition to stand up for workers' rights, to defend people's rights and freedoms and condemn the preemptive use of the notwithstanding clause to suspend workers' rights. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. No one has done more to attack workers' rights than the Prime Minister who eats up their paychecks with 40-year highs in $54 million for the Arrive Scam app, an app we didn't need that didn't work that sent 10,000 people wrongly into quarantine and that could have been designed for a quarter million dollars in a weekend but took $54 million instead. Some of the companies the Prime Minister said got the money said they never received it. It's time for the truth. Will the Prime Minister support our motion to call in the auditors? Yeah. The right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I know we're all astonished to hear the Leader of the Opposition miss an opportunity to stand up for the rights and freedoms of workers. Uh, 
that is something that we expect him to continue uh, to do alongside all of us in the House in uh, condemning the preemptive reuse of the notwithstanding clause. But on top of that, he's also talking about cuts to EI. When he criticizes us for being there and ensuring that EI and CPP is there for workers uh, into the future, he calls that uh, tax increases. We're going to be there to support people pay paying EI. We're going to be there to support uh, people with their pensions. We're going to be there for dental and rental. He is not. The Honourable Member for La Prairie. Mr. Speaker, our hospitals have reached a breaking point. This is the message from the Group of Emergency Service Heads of Quebec this morning. They wrote that because of a lack of resources, emergency rooms are no longer able to treat people whose clinical condition is unstable or even fatal. At the same time, the Toronto Star revealed that the Prime Minister is plotting to break up the common front of Quebec and the provinces, which are calling for an increase in health transfers. He wants to divide them, to force them to give up $27 billion. Does he